Buenos dias, amigos. Good morning, friends. It is Tuesday, April 7th, and we are on our second week of virtual learning. It's Miss Betsy again. Good morning, pigeons. Good morning, explorers. I hope that you all have been having fun and enjoying your packets and videos from last week. We have a whole new packet for you for this week and lots of fun new videos. So you will have so much fun enjoying them. We love it when you send us emails um, to your teachers with pictures and videos of you doing your virtual learning. So keep those coming. They really fill our buckets. Um, before we get started, let's say our pledge. Here is Miss Betsy's flag. And of course, Miss Betsy has one of her most favorite people in the world with her right here. Miss Amanda, I love you, Miss Amanda, I miss you. And these two guys have become best buddies, Pigeon and Luna. They hang out at my house all the time and they wanted to be here with me to make your video. Okay, everybody, levantate, stand up. Remember, these are your legs, stand up, levantate. Put your right hand on your heart. We always put our left hand behind our back. We are serious, we look at our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Very good, my friends. Okay, let's start off our morning as we always do in pigeon class with a prayer. Everybody fold your hands. You can fold them like this, you can fold them like this. I like to close my eyes so I can really concentrate. Dear God, we wanted to say good morning to you. We wanted to thank you for the beautiful weather we've been having. And God, we pray for those people in our world that are suffering, the people that are scared, the people that are sick. God, please heal them with your wonderful, loving, healing hands. And God, please allow us to embrace and enjoy this family time together in our homes, playing, um, going on hikes, enjoying our um, movie time and everything we do with our families. We love you, God, and we thank you for spring, and we thank you for Waypoint Preschool family and staff. Amen. Okay, friends, let's get started. In circle time today, we have a few different things to do. Um, I'm going to do a song right now, and it's called Ballet Dancing Truck Driver. Some of you might know this song, some might not. It's lots of fun, so enjoy. Here we go, Ballet Dancing Truck Driver. Follow along. One day my grandma asked me, what do you want to be? I thought and thought and thought some more. I want to be a truck driver. I want to be a truck driver. As I was watching TV, I thought ballet's the dance for me. And now I know I want to be a ballet dancing truck driver. A ballet dancing truck driver. game so now I want to be a baseball player batter up and a ballet dancing truck driver a ballet dancing truck driver then I went to a rodeo so now I want to be a cowpoke riding giddy up a baseball player batter up construction site so now I want to be a builder building tap 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 a cap of riding giddy up a baseball player batter up and a ballet dancing truck driver a ballet dancing truck driver I really do oh now I want to be a firefighter I'll save you a builder building tap 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 a cowpoke riding, giddy up, a baseball player, batter up, and a ballet dancer. 
dancing truck driver. I'm a ballet dancing truck driver. I love to look for treasure, so now I want to be a pirate sailing. Arr! A firefighter. I'll save you. A builder building. Tap, tap, tap. A cap of grinding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A baseball player. Truck driver. A ballet dancing truck driver. I looked up at the moon and now I want to be an astronaut. Lift off a pirate sailing. Arr. A firefighter. I'll save you. A builder building. Tap, tap, tap. A cowboy riding. Yeah. A baseball player. Better. Part for Miss Betsy. One day my grandma asked me, what do you want to be? And I said, I don't know. There are so many interesting things to be. And she said, that's okay. You have plenty of time to decide. And besides, you have lots of good ideas, like an astronaut liftoff, a pirate sailing, a firefighter, I'll save you, a builder loved that friends okay um here we are again back at circle and i wanted to show you a couple things from your packets this week um that miss betsy sent some time coloring um we gave you two different um emergent readers and i wanted to show you the one that i colored and made and kind of um give you a little bit of a guide for your moms and dads and brothers and sisters and grandparents who are helping you to how we do these emergent readers in class Okay, we ask our friends to use their pointer or their reading finger and point to each word as we read it. Counting Flowers by Miss Betsy. And there I did my coloring. I also want you to notice something about my coloring. I used colored pencils and something really neat about colored pencils and crayons is that you can press hard or light when you're coloring to give your art different effects. If you look at my black plant pot, I used a black, um, I think I used a colored pencil and I pressed really hard on the outline and the scalloped edge right here to give it a dark black. And then on the rest, I used my colored pencil lightly, which gave it a different effect. We talk to our pigeons all the time about using lots of colors and um, creating lots of details in your art. Okay, page number one. Remember, we point to each word. I see one red flower. There it is, one red flower. The neat thing about these emergent readers is that they're very repetitive, so they help you kiddos learn how to read. And you can find some sight words too. I see two orange flowers. And you'll notice again, I used the same technique on making some of my orange light and some dark. I see three yellow flowers. I see four green flowers. I see five blue flowers. I see six purple flowers. Very good. I wanted to teach you real quick since we're talking about the colors. This is the sign for colors, which is called colores in Spanish. In our book, you have one, red flower, two 
orange flowers, three yellow flowers, four green flowers, five blue flowers, and six purple flowers. And I just realized I forgot the last page of my book. I see a rainbow of flowers. And on this page, you get to draw your flowers. And this is the sign for rainbow, one of my favorite signs. Something else you're gonna see in your packet is a page called Things That Grow. This week, we're talking all about plants, flowers, nature, fruits, vegetables, and we're talking about plants and how they grow, what they need to grow, and all things plant-related. On this page, we had to think, what are some things that grow? Hmm, does this Pete the Cat book grow? No, it's not alive. Does my paper clip here grow? No, no, paper clips don't grow, they're not alive. Does Miss Betsy grow? Yes, I'm a person. People, children, and babies, they grow. So in the first box right here, it says people, and you're gonna draw a picture there. I decided to draw a girl. I decided to draw a little girl, there she is. And remember when you're drawing a person, remember your mat man. Mat man has one head, one body, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two ears, two arms, two hands, two legs, and two feet. And let me ask you something about that. Do our arms grow out of our heads? No, we gotta put our body on our person and our arms and legs come from there. The second box on our page says animals. Animals are alive and animals grow. The second thing I decided to draw was my kitty cat, Penny. There she is. You can draw whatever kind of animal you want because all animals do grow. I have this cord right here from my CD player. I'm wondering, does this grow? Would you draw a picture of a CD player? No, CD players don't grow. Silly Miss Betsy. We have to think of one more thing that grows in our world. People grow, animals grow. What else? You guessed it, plants. Plants grow. Plants category includes trees, flowers, plants, fruits, vegetables. All those things grow from teeny tiny little seeds. I decided to draw a little bit of each. I drew a tree, I drew a flower, some grass, and some strawberries. Have fun with that sheet, friends. I can't wait to see what you do with that. Okay. The last thing we're gonna do is go, well, you know what? I'm gonna read a fun little Pete the Cat book before we go. Because Pete, you know, we, we've talked about Pete so many times. He's so much fun and he's so groovy. And this book is called Pete the Cat, Pete's Big Lunch by James Dean. And the reason I picked this book is because you'll see later, I make a salad for our cooking video this week using all the fruits and vegetables that we find on our earth. And in Pete's lunch here, he used a bunch of fruit and vegetables too. All right, let's see what Pete is up to. Pete the Cat's Big Lunch by James Dean. Lunch, here comes Pete. It is lunchtime and Pete is ready to eat. Those are rhyming words, friends. Pete, eat. What should Pete eat? Hmm, a sandwich should be nice. And he's got thinking bubbles. These bubbles are kind of like action lines that show that Pete is thinking something. And in this picture, he's thinking about bread. 
Yes, Pete wants a sandwich. He opens the fridge. He takes out a loaf of bread. He finds a yummy fish. He adds tomato and mayonnaise. Okay, here, here he goes. Pete looks at his sandwich. Hmm, it's too small. Something is missing. Pete knows what it needs. His sandwich needs an apple. Pete loves apples. Okay, he's got a fish, an apple, and mayonnaise. I don't know about that sandwich. His sandwich needs crackers. Crackers are crunchy. Pete loves crunchy, crunchy crackers. Pete looks at his sandwich again. It is still too small. Hmm. Pete is very hungry. Pete adds a pickle, cheese, an egg, two hot dogs, a banana, and a can of beans. Okay, this is probably the most interesting sandwich I've ever heard of. Something is still missing. Pete adds ice cream. He takes three huge scoops. He can barely fit or reach the top of his sandwich, friends. Look at that. Pete's sandwich is too big for Pete to eat. Pete wonders what to do. He thinks and he thinks. Look what he's doing while he thinks, friends. He's playing his guitar. Pete loves to play his guitar. I've got it, Pete says. Pete calls all of his friends. He asks them to come over. I wonder why he's gonna ask them to come over. Hmm. Everyone goes to Pete's house. They are all very hungry. Pete shows them his big lunch. Are you hungry, asks Pete. Pete's sandwich is big enough for everybody. Dig in, says Pete. Oh, Pete, you're such a bucket filler. You're, sh whoop, you're sharing, you're sharing. Pete's sandwich is good. Pete's sandwich is very good. Look at everybody. Everybody's buckets are full. Pete's sandwich is all gone. Pete's friends are full. They liked pig, Pete's big lunch. Thanks for lunch, Pete's friends say. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome, Pete says. Sharing is cool, just like you, Pete. Oh, that was such a good book. Round of applause, we love our Pete. He's such a cool cat. Okay, friends, in your packets, you're gonna find a few other things for the week. You are going to find some two different bags of seeds. And Miss Rachel's gonna talk about what to do with these seeds in her videos. You are going to find, ooh, you're going to find some watercolor paper and you're gonna find some colored tissue paper. Now, this tissue paper is special. It's called bleeding tissue paper. Does it bleed like we bleed? No, the bleeding tissue paper means that when it gets wet, the color bleeds onto other things. It um, is a way to transfer the color from the tissue paper to the watercolor paper. You're gonna learn all about how to do an art project with Miss Rachel and Miss Amanda on that. It's going to be a two-step um, art project activity. You'll watch Miss Rachel with the bleeding tissue paper first, and then you will learn how to do a directed drawings of some flowers with Miss Amanda, and you will put them together for a beautiful piece of art. The last thing we put in your packets is a little treat for you. It is some gummy worms. Everybody take your hand and make your worm, Carl Cross. Now, can anyone guess why we might have put worms in your packets this week? Let's think about it. We're learning about nature and plants and fruits and vegetables. I want you guys to look that up with your parents. Look up 
worms and how they help our gardens grow. Send us some videos or pictures on what you learn about those worms and how important they are to videos. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> important they are to gardens. Okay, friends, lastly, I want to just go through our packet real quick. You've got your letter from us explaining everything. You have your color words paper. On this paper, you will see each butterfly has a different word. This one says blue, and it also has the Spanish word azul. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a blue crayon and you're gonna write the word blue on the butterfly wing right here. And then you can lightly color this butterfly blue. You're gonna do that with every picture on there. You also have two emergent readers. I read one about um, the flowers. I read that with you this morning, counting flowers. You also have another one to do the little, or sorry, yes, the little seed. You have a whole bunch of fun activities I'm not gonna go through them all, but they are all on plants and gardening, the parts of a plant, labeling a plant. What does a plant need to grow? Those are all for you to do if you would like. Oh, this one's fun. We have two different scavenger hunts. We have a neighborhood scavenger hunt right here with all these fun things that you can check off if you see. Remember to stay safely away from all of your neighbors when you do this. You go with your family and you stay safe. You will also write your name on this line right here. And if you are ready to do your first and last name, we would love to see that. There's also a scavenger hunt bingo. This should be a lot of fun too. We have a washing your hands worksheet. This just reminds us the proper way to wash our hands. You can review that with your parents. Sometimes our friends like to put some soap on their hand and put it right in the water and then start washing, but that doesn't work because the soap is all gone. So we have to wet our hands a little bit. We get our soap. We wash the fronts. We wash the backs. We wash in between. We wash for at least 20 seconds and then we rinse off our hands and dry them. Something else fun we included in your packets is a time capsule packet. Now this is for you and your parents to go through and talk about if you would like to make a time capsule. This is something really cool that you can do as a family. And I'll let your parents teach you all about what a time capsule is. We know that Easter's coming up this Sunday and this is um, one of the most important days of our entire year. This is the day that Jesus rose or, um, from the tomb. He is risen. And to commemorate this wonderful special day, you'll probably be doing some fun things with your families. But we included in here a beautiful cross. And you can take your watercolors that were given to you last week. Miss Betsy did hers and make it beautiful. So we remember that he is the reason for this season. Okay, friends, have a great week. Thank you for joining. Mwah. We love you. Mwah. Besos.